Cameron, back again for another Tweak Time video. As you may have seen in one of our previous videos that we posted not too long ago, we had a look at this laptop, and what we're looking at, of course, is the Razer Blade. This is a new laptop, gaming laptop, from uh, Razer, the company that's known for a whole series of really good keyboards and um, mice. Um, We've given you our initial impressions of the Razer Blade so far. Um, what we're coming back to here is looking at the Switchblade UI, the user interface, which is an integral part of the Razer Blade laptop. So I'm going to change the camera angle now and then give you a good look at this panel here and exactly what it does. Okay, the piece of software you're looking at now is the Razer Synapse 2.0 software. That's what controls the keyboard as well as the Switchblade UI. So I want to run you through that now and show you some of the um, functionality that it offers. Pretty much any key on the keyboard can be customized. Um, there's a few that can't. The start key, um, the Razer button, and I was checking before, I think that's pretty much it. So if we take the Z key for example, um, of course the default key is Z. Um, but let's just say we wanted to change that. We can go from default to a keyboard function. We can change it to E if you wanted to, just to really confuse people. Um, let me go back there. Um, we can change it to a mouse function, um, which could be handy. You know, if you wanted to customize your game a certain way, I'm sure that, you know, in some aspects that could, that could become useful. So you can change it to a mouse function, left, right click, scroll, um, and so on. Um, other options we have here, macro, um, switch profile, launch program, which is cool. So if you wanted to quickly launch a program, you can browse for the exe file here and then um, execute it. Um, and you can disable it as well if you wanted to. Uh, we won't do that because we'll be missing a Z key, of course. Um, up here we have lighting options and this uh, allows you to change uh, the brightness. And this also allows you to change the switchblade module brightness as well. So if we change, if we change that, um, you can't see it, it's a little bit off camera, but it is adjusting the brightness of the screen and also the 10 customizable keys. Um, now you've got some settings here as well. Put the keyboard and switchblade module to sleep uh, when idle for one minute. Um, and switch to trackpad power saving mode when computer is locked. Um, yeah, so back to customizable settings over here, um, we have, this is uh, the keypad, you can see here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, um, so of course that's binded to 6, of course here you can use the same customization here to program it to whatever you may need it to be. Um, now if we come over one more here, um, we've added a um, custom um, button here. So what you can do here, you can create your own custom buttons. Again, you can choose a, a different, uh, the different types of functions that you need. So if we were to say make that um, the letter D, um, what we can do here is you can also choose an icon for it. Now it does come with some provided, as you can see here. If I scroll through, if I scroll through the list, so we just select one here. Now when we select this icon, it'll actually change the icon that you see on the Switchblade panel, which is really cool. Um, and you can also have your own custom icons as well. So if you want to create, uh, select a picture or text, you can do that as well. So I can, you know, AAA, and this is what the button will look like. Um, or you can just select um, one of the icons that are provided by Razer. So then we save that, and then you can see here this is one we added before the A, now this is D. So these are just very, of course, basic um, customizations that we've done. And these will show up on the uh, Switchblade panel. So this has been a look at the Razer Synapse 2.0 software that comes with the Razer Blade. Now we'll continue on with the uh, looking at, in detail at the actual Switchblade UI panel itself. Okay, with the camera fully set up, you get your first look at the Switchblade UI. This is this panel here. On a regular keyboard, you would normally have a numpad. On the Razer Blade, that's been thrown away, and this setup here has been put in place. So I'm going to give you a quick look at it now, in as much detail as I can. So uh, here we have 10 different buttons, which are fully customizable. Um, by default here, you see um, you have the touchpad. 
So that just acts as a regular touchpad instead of it being over this way. Uh, it's a little bit off camera now. Where a regular uh, touchpad is on a on a laptop, it's being placed here. So this is a multi-touch touch panel here that has gesture support as well. Um, left and right mouse buttons here. Um, you have a series of numbers up here that you can use. These can be customized, fully customized for different macros and commands that you might have in your game. To go back, you just push the razor button here. Um, here brings up a calculator that you can use. Again, we'll go back. Um, now, what's cool, and the things that these buttons that come here by default, and I imagine will be very popular, um, this is YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, and this here just shows um, the time, as you can see, and the date as well. And the style matches very well to the rest of the, you know, the keyboard and the rest of the styling that the razor blade has. So we'll go back. Um, what I want to do, I'll start with Facebook. And I'm not sure how well you can see that. Um, but this, is, this appears to be the mobile version of Facebook. We all know Facebook, so I don't think you really need to log in there. If you log in with a mobile device or something of that kind, you, you, you'll get to the mobile site. Um, and Twitter, similar type of thing. I'm sure we, a lot of us all know Twitter. Um, and here, this is just a login screen for Twitter. Again, this is the mobile version of Twitter. Okay, so then we can go back. Also, there's a, this is a refresh button here. You can see. Um, we did have some issues getting this up and running working before, and we found out it does require Internet Explorer 9. Uh, when we first got this laptop, it didn't have IE9 installed, it had an earlier version. Once we updated to IE9 through Windows Update, it worked just fine. So you'll have um, left, I mean front, uh, and forward, um, back and forward buttons even, that you can see here. Um, now what's really cool, and I think what's going to make this really popular, is you can see here, we've just got into the mobile version of YouTube. And up here you have home, browse, most viewed, most recent, search, subscriptions, recommended, watch later, favorites, and your account. So these are all, the, all these uh, options are what you'd expect from YouTube, and they're right there that you can just quickly push, and you, you know, it loads up quickly. Of course, Justin Bieber we have there for most viewed. Um, most recent videos here. You can search for videos. So what I like about this, um, if you wanted to search for something, um, you use the keyboard over here as you can see. So if I go Skyrim, I haven't rehearsed this, so I'm hoping it'll work. Uh, level pass. Um, let's see what comes up with that when I search for that. Um, okay, so we've got Skyrim, how to beat. Let's open it up and see what it is. So that's going to load a YouTube video. So what's, what's good about this while well, it loads? Um, you can see here, this is 800 by 480 resolution screen. It's not just a touchpad, of course it's a screen, it's working, it's buffering a little bit there. So if you're playing on the large version of the screen, if you're playing a certain Skyrim level, for example, and you can't pass the level, um, without even quitting the game, without even getting out of it, you can load up YouTube on this secondary um, screen here, this panel, um, and then it will show you, you know, if you find the right video, of course, it will show you how to pass the level. Um, I'm not sure what's happening here. That's buffering quite a bit. Play, okay, now uh, it's loading. Play play. So let that go for a minute. Oh, it's so, good. so that's buffering quite a lot. I'm not sure what's happening there. Let's try it. Let's go home. So this is YouTube Home. Um, Eminem, sexy, and I know it. Super Bowl. Let's play that. See so if it, how it loads. Minister, this seems to be loading fine. Chocolate, but I'm here strictly in a professional. <laughs> Okay, obviously our internet connection is sort of tying up a little bit here. Thinks you're naked. My shell is brown. It just look Okay. So yeah, this has been your look. You sort of your hands on look at the Switchblade UI, the user interface here that comes with the Blade gaming laptop. Uh, I'm pretty impressed by it. Um, it's it's definitely going to be handy. The other thing I didn't mention, Facebook and Twitter, you know, if you're in a game and you know your friend asks you to look at something on Facebook, and you say, "No, no, sorry, I can't. Like, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a battle right now." You just push the Facebook button, 
while you're while you're in game and you can just quick up checkily. Also if you want to brag about some kills or something like you've just got like this is perfect for perfect for gamers. You don't have to get out of the game. You don't have to leave the game. Some games don't like when you drop back to the desktop they might crash or it might just be really slow to do that. Um, so this is a really good really good solution and really innovative and it does go a long way to making this uh, uh, I guess a true gaming laptop. This is this is a razor promote. This is the first, the world's first true gaming laptop. I didn't quite agree with that, but it is a really really good gaming laptop, as you'll see in my other other article that I wrote about. So yeah, this has been your look at the Switchblade UI. Um, I hope you enjoy it and come back soon again for um, some more videos.